And um, exercise sheets four starts with a rather interesting question about about mining, about uh, structures of the block, about what's going on there. Um, okay, let's start. So the nonce field is a 32 bit long, resulting in four billion possible allocations. However, this is not sufficient for getting a high probability to find a valid block in current difficulty times. Um, so a lot of hashes required for um, finding a valid block. I'll tell you how I got to this number and um, explain possible changes that you can introduce in your block to change the hash without making the block invalid. Discuss which of these changes are more expensive than others. So these are, this is a question that um, directly is for miners, so to say. So a miner um, wants to create new blocks and um, they need to think about, okay, um, how can we um, create proof of work? So how can we solve mining puzzles in the most efficient way possible? So if you want to change your nonce field, so to say, you need to think about, okay, what are the cheapest changes? Or if your nonce field is, is overflowing, so to say, um, you need to think about, okay, what are cheap changes I can make um, such that I can um, restart using this nonce field. Um, and we have two numbers here. This um, 4 billion here, um, possible allocations for the nonce field. So that's a fairly easy number. So we have a 32 bit. So 32, um, two, to the power, two to the power of 32 is this uh, 4 billion number. Um, so these are all possible allocations and is 6.4 times 10 to the power of 22. Um, that's the reason for that number is that we usually have one, um, uh, we have with our hash rate per second. So currently I think we had 100 million, <coughs> sorry, um, Terra hashes per second. So a crazy amount of number and you have to obviously uh, multiply it by 60 seconds um, and per 10 to get to your 10 minutes so uh, that's the average um, a block is found so we can take a small look at um, a block explorer and see if that's really the case and about what's going on there um, so that you see how far the blocks are um, between each other or not so we have our room here, as you can see, and you can see it's not always the case. So um, that's the last block for today. So 1401, uh, that's a little bit of time ahead. I, uh, maybe that's, I think that's um, because of the um, timing issues. So this is a different time zone. So therefore these numbers are not German time, but um, some other time. Um, so it's not, so 13 minutes, uh, four minutes, then it was um, eight minutes, then it was um, 25 minutes. So this has a variation within, but on average, you can assume that it's roughly 10 minutes. Um, so this is um, the number. How do we get to this um, 6.4 times 10 to the power of 22? So that's the, that's the reason for that. Um, so now the network needs to do that and um, you want to be able to find a valid block so you need to um, recalculate your nonce field or you need to change something in your block that you can recalculate um, the block so i think um, to answer this um, we can take a look at the um, block itself um, i'll take a look at the um, powerpoint here Very good. So that's the that's the um, that's the question of has everyone the same um, search puzzle? Obviously not. But um, in here you also see again the block structure and what you can change and what you can't change, so to say. So let's go over it. Let's take a look at it and um, see what's going on there. So um, first of all, um, can we change the block size here? So block size is the first thing that comes up. Block size itself is not changeable because it's a dependent variable. So dependent on how large your block is, um, 
this number changes if it's uh, if you change it and it's not the same or it's not correct anymore then you will um then you will fail so to say um The version is the next field that's up for discussion. And the version itself is um, something that we discussed uh, last week um, or, or yesterday in terms of, okay, um, we can use the, we can abuse the um, version field for um, signaling. So if we wanna um, signal somehow a, a, that we support some proposal that we can use this field. Um, and I assume you could use it. Um, you can you could sign for um, version for for proposals which are not there or which for bits which are not used. Um, but this is uh, something that's not really observed in nature. So no one uses this. So you could in theory do it, but um, it's not it's not something that's common. So um, I did not include it in the solution there because it's too too unfamiliar. Okay, so let's let's take a look at the next block, the hash of the previous block header. The hash of the previous block header is something that signals um, for you as a miner, I am building upon this block. So um, if you decide to build upon a special block, you need to reference um, the previous block header. And usually, if there is no some not some race condition, there is only one block that makes sense. So you can only you should link to the highest block in existence um, that currently exists. Otherwise you will likely lose money because your block will, won't wind up in the longest uh, chain. So um, to not waste money to um, to really ensure that your Coinbase transaction, the transaction that pays you the transaction fee plus the mining reward, you need to build up on the highest block that's currently available. So changing that, does not really make sense, um, does not, doesn't have any value here. Um, the hash of the Merkle root is something um, that we already um, discuss, um, discussed already. Um, the hash of the Merkle root is the tree, or is the, is, the, is the root hash of the tree, which includes all transactions um, of the, of this block. So um, if you um, want to change the hash of the Merkle root, you need to change the underlying transactions. So if you just change the hash of it, uh, you will, uh, it's, uh, you're generating an invalid hash and no one can really um, check if you did the correct work. So you cannot change it directly, but you need to change it indirectly. And that's a very good question because what you can change. So um, it's also um, what came up in the last exercises is you can first of all change the orders of the transaction. So you have 100 orders, arrange them however you like, recalculate the hash of the Merkle, the, the Merkle tree and uh, recalculate the hash of the Merkle um, um, tree itself. So store it again in the uh, block header and you changed it. So changing, adding, removing is always an option. But um, in terms of what you as a miner can also do is you can change your Coinbase transaction. And this is also something I mentioned in the, um, in the solution is that you can change the script signature field of the Coinbase transaction. So that's a question that always arises. And I like this, uh, I like this script signature field of the Coinbase transaction because it's, it's an uncommon, it's something that no one really has thought of before they, they created this mechanism and people started to use it and to app use it for data storage, for political messages, as I showed you, I think two or three weeks um, with the halving where people posted some, um, some uh, newspaper articles in there. They use it for nonce uh, recap recalculation. They use it for minor assignment so um it is also possible that um if you are in a in a mining pool then it is likely that the mining pool has some kind of individual script signature field in there um which use which is used for identification so if you look at the at this one here um at the chrome then you will see that um the miners here for example are um 
on pool or binance or and this is often due to um the script signature field so yeah as you see here this is the coinbase data so coinbase transaction uh script signature field um and binance is in there so that serves as a um, identification but also you see some other query information and not really displayable in uh, regular uh, characters um, but that that is used for uh, for changing the mining puzzle as well or for resetting the nonce here um, so that's that's part of here so um, you can change the script field you can also change the at coinbase transaction address so um that you in terms of look in um that you change where you want to pay it so change the output script stuff like that so that's also that's also very possible then um so that's the hash of the merkle root here oh sorry moving back here and then we have um three four other uh, other um fields and uh, we have the time Time is a very interesting field as well, because um, this can also be used um, for resetting the nonce field. Um, this is not, um, as we stated in some slides on, on Bitcoin basics, Bitcoin has no notion of time. And um, therefore it's not possible to clearly say when a block has been created. So the miner itself can also cheat a little bit, but they can, so to say, update the time, they can, um, add some second, remove some second, um, that's not an issue. So the last time I looked at it, um, they are allowed to um, have a corridor of, I think, up to two hours or so. So two hours, that's uh, a little bit of what they can change within there. Um, but that's something also you can consider. The difficulty um, is also not really changeable as it's um, constantly recalculated every 2016 blocks and if you recalculate it then um, you then it's fixed for these 14 days so if you would change it people or other miners would say okay that's um, this one has made it a little bit um, lighter for uh, more more easier for him to to calculate this um, um, solution for this mining puzzle and therefore it's rejected so you cannot really change the difficulty as well and the nonce, obviously, that's the field we're talking about. We want to reset, so that's uh, off limits here. And the transaction count is also a dependent field. So you cannot change it by itself, but you would need to change the transactions down here. Um, but if you change the transaction down here, you automatically also change the um, hash of the Merkle root here. So that's for sure. Um, now it's a very good question the second part of the question if you looked at the um, pdf here um, is um, we discussed what possible changes we can introduce in the block um, and discuss which of these changes are more expensive than others so why again are we discussing which um, which are more expensive than others the reason for this is that the miner wants it as easy as possible. And I think I explained it a little bit already. So um, you have to think about the operations you wanna make or you need to make to actually facilitate um, this change and how fast you can move on to just changing the nonce field. So um, obviously the easiest ones is the nonce and the time because these are independent from everything else so there is no um, further recalculation done or something else um, that's just a very easy part here um, the script signature field of the coinbase transaction is also very cheap because you only need to recalculate parts of the tree so as you um, might remember you have your tree and um, everything stays the same except one transaction so you would only need to be able to recalculate this part um, of of this tree that's going on there that's involving this uh, coinbase transaction and um, everything else in terms of for example if you want to change the um, the 
transaction output of your Coinbase transaction, then you would basically say, okay, I need to create a new address and this address needs to be generated. So this is also computationally more expensive than other operations. Um, what else? Um, what else did we discuss? Um, the ordering of the transactions would um, allow us to, or would require us to recalculate the complete tree. So that's definitely an issue. Um, and, uh, or that's more computationally expensive, also depending on the number of your transactions. So if you only have two transactions in there, it's not then a big deal, then you have 2000 transactions in there. And um, also introdu introducing new transaction could also lead to the recalculation of parts of the tree. Um, but that's um, that's the the long answer to this question here. Um, we take a look at um, tweetback um, so that we would um, have a little bit of an idea. Um, so the first question is: Can you explain what the issue is with this number? Why it is not sufficient in easy words? So um, the issue with this number is that um, you. As you, as you know from the first exercise uh, from cryptographic basics, we had some kind of number we wanted to add towards the string and recalculate it then. And um, that's not an issue because this number can be independent, can be indefinitely large from this exercise back then. So it wouldn't mind if we would add thousands of um, numbers behind there, we could always find another number or we could always add another number. But the problem is that this nonce field is limited and this um, amount of um, maximum allocations, the amount of possible values that can be um, selected for this nonce here is rather limited. So it's four billion, it's not that limited, but it's in terms of Bitcoin, it's very limited um, to do this. So that's, um, that's the general issue here. So we need to find other ways how to uh, reset, so to say, this nonce field. Um, so a um, question, we can add random script in the transaction zero for, ch for changing hash of Merkle tree, but I'm not sure, can we still take mining reward and transaction fees when we add random script in a transaction zero. So if you um, send your 50 or not your 50, but your 6.25 plus your transaction fee um, towards a random script, you will lose the money, a lot of money you lose, but obviously you could integrate, for example, a second um, um, transaction output with zero Bitcoin in a random script. So that would, would work to change it. But that's something I would, subsume under what I told you about changing the Coinbase transaction. And the miner state a different version than the one they're actually using. Um, I have no idea how other, um, so, so other nodes would probably reject blocks generated by another version. So the version has to be correct, I think. Um, so the one question also already is answered um, by my colleague. Thank you very much. Um, how is the minor name parsed out of the script signature? Um, very good, um, very good question. Um, this is some kind of so I I know the I know the I know a um, the per a person working at Blockchair, and they told me that basically. The miners tell these block explorers, okay, if we producing a block, we have this and that format. And then it's basically a string matching pattern. And um, so, so that's the, that's the, uh, an easy part. So there is no, there is no way to do it by yourself, but there is some way um, how the miners tell you to do. Maybe they publish it, I don't know, but they told Blockchair, for example. Um, what does Coindays destroyed mean? So I think when we looked at the block explorer here, um, go back to, um, um, to the block here. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it is. Um, my guess is, um, that 
the idea is you have transactions which are which are using um, um, transaction outputs which are older and which are younger. So to say, if I have a uh, if if I received money yesterday and I'm spending it today, then I'm destroying one coin day. And if I have a received money from ten years ago um, and destroy it and destroy, I spend it um, this this today. Then um, like 10, 10 years times uh, three hundred sixty five days uh, would have been destroyed. And that's um, <laughs> that's actually uh, very interesting. Oh, that's very interesting. It's always depending on yourself. <laughs> Um, I found it interesting because I think in the last blocks, I think two or three days ago, someone actually spent a transaction output from um, block 500 or 5000. So a very, very early block, in, uh, which was mined in 2009, where nothing happened and someone spent their 50 Bitcoins from them. So um, that's quite quite interesting. But um, And people rumored it to be Satoshi Nakamoto. But um, I think this this was already debunked. Okay, um, continuing. Um, if we change the block hash, doesn't the following block become invalid? Yes, if you change any previous block hash and you mine a new block based on those changes, your new block will not be accepted by the network, making it valid. Yeah, so obviously if you um, change the block hash of a previous block, then that's a problem that's not going to work but um you are currently working on the most current block or on the next block to be mined so um there is no there is no block building up on yours already so um don't don't mix this up we're talking about the mining process here we're talking about the most current block here um what exactly uh coin date coin based data is and where does it where does it stored in a block? Isn't it included in transaction part? So yeah, they. Where is it stored exactly? So this is the Coinbase data. Um, it's in the script signature um, of the Coinbase transaction. Let's try to find it. Um, so we have this. Um, this should be our Coinbase transaction. Obviously, it's the first transaction in the block. Um, it has three outputs, zero coin days destroyed. Why? Because it's just fresh money, so to say. And let's see what's going on in there. So the transaction. And we see um, we have some op return here. So obviously um, some data was put in there. So this could be something used for recalculating. And let's see if we have some kind of raw transaction that sounds always good da, 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 da. so this is um, the transaction id we have the version the size so we never discussed um, contents of a transaction so don't worry about that and then we have this coinbase and this is where if you would decode it it would um, and you see here v in is v in is this a transaction input and this is an array over this Coinbase. And this is the value, so to say. Um, no, yeah, so this is the, the, the these are the um, transaction inputs. And these are the transaction outputs with also the SEC op dope, op hash, op equal verify, classic pay to public um, key hash as I, uh, teach you in the in the lecture and the exercise so and this is some op return which some random garbage data okay so as i told you it's in the transaction a coinbase transaction in the uh, uh, in the transaction input and the only transaction input in the script signature field I didn't quite understand why are we trying to make changes in the block? How does it help in calculating the nonce faster? Um, it does not help you in calculating the nonces faster. It uh, helps you in um, being able to further calculate um, to, to, to reset this nonce field. So again, I'm trying to explain it in simple words. Um, 
So maybe I can do a little bit of drawing here. So we have a we have a nonce field. And we start with almost zeros. So it's uh, 32 bits, so it's 32 zeros. And we start and sometime someday we will ar arrive at at this at this um at this number and in the end we will arrive at this number so we exhausted all possible we 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 we, we tried every number in this area from zero 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 um times 30 32 times to 111 32 times and we exhausted we did not find a solution so we need to change something in the block so that we can reuse this area here this one um to continue um trying to solve this puzzle and because this number is only 4 billion and 4 billion is much 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 smaller this than this uh, 10 to the power of 22 so um, that's, these are um, other numbers. Yeah, so you need to do that. And so it's not, it's not actually not that, um, that's maybe a little bit over exaggerated, um, but um, it's definitely smaller. <laughs> so your job to uh, calculate how often um, miners have to reset uh, these nonce field until they find a valid solution. Okay, no further questions. Very good. Let's continue. What does probabilistic consensus mean? Probabilistic consensus is a concept uh, we introduced in the slides here. Um, bum, 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 bum. This one here and the consensus mechanism is an ongoing process in bitcoin therefore the order of blocks or transactions is never 100 percent safe so what does this mean um the the issue with um ongoing consensus is that you can never be 100 percent sure that the order of transactions is correct and that the transactions included um are actually there why because if you remember from when we talked about 51% attacks, um, there is a possibility that an, an, an attacker can manipulate the history and that transactions, that blocks, um, which you see now, may not wind up in the longest chain in the future. And this can be quite dangerous. And this is uh, mostly a, that's often a legal issue um, in terms of um why can we why can't we use blockchain for more um um for business transactions um, or bitcoin in the in this example because it's only bitcoin or bitcoin is the um has a probabilistic consensus um then it's often the reason because we do not have a settlement finality so settlement finality means that um a bank is able to say a transaction has happened 100%. So if I send money, there's a certain time. And if this time has passed, then there is no way for the other party to get the money back. So that's that's the idea of settlement finality. That's the idea of um, probabilistic consensus. This can always happen that money is actually taken from you without your consent, so to say. So that's the idea behind that. Mm, let's continue. So not too difficult question, but it's, I think it's good to know a little bit the background. Briefly describe two incentives for mining and full nodes to participate in the Bitcoin network. Um, so I think the mining um, incentives are quite um, clear. Um, if you want to uh, mine, then obviously you um, are able to produce blocks or you're able to pour a lot of energy into blocks and um, out of that you earn your money. So you have costs in terms of energy, in terms of hardware, in terms of um, maybe employees who do all the stuff for you, uh, but you also have the reward in terms of a mining reward, currently 6.25 Bitcoin plus um, your transaction fees 
from the transaction you included in your block. So these are the incentives for mining transaction fee and um, mining reward. And for full nodes, the um, incentives um, are really um, are really different and are not too too easy to describe. And if we would ask this question in terms of a an axiom, so to say, um, we have so this is a, some kind of where you can easily discuss, and it's a rather simple question um, because what incentives do you have? So maybe you are a student of blockchain-based systems engineering and you understand the Bitcoin blockchain better and want to run your own full node, then that's a valid motivation to do so. Um, but also you could um, run your own uh, full node, for example, if you want to connect your light node. So you have a mobile phone, you have some kind of IoT device which relies on a full node um, and you want to make sure that it works correctly so you're setting up your own full node. Um, or you have a business which relies on data. So you are doing data analytics, you're doing coin tracking, stuff like that. Um, or you have a, you're a merchant and you want to make sure that your transactions wind up in the longest, uh, in the longest blockchain. So the money that you receive is, um, quite safe. So these are valid reasons for someone to run their own, um, mining reward, uh, their own full node or miners. Um, okay, let's continue um, with the sheet. Suppose a miner creates a double spending transaction and manages to mine the transaction in a block. What happens to the other transactions in the block? So that's a very interesting question and maybe I need a little bit of elaboration. I think I did this uh, last week already where I explained a little bit the idea behind this. Um, but let's try again. Um, so we have a um, we have a blockchain. So it's 10, 11, 12. So this is just a block height. So the regular um, the, the the height of the block. And then we um, so these are all valid. What does well it mean? Um, a lot of things I already showed you that, but for the, the sake of the example, two things mean um, it's uh, the proof of work was correctly correctly calculated, and the transactions are valid. So if you if you remember again this um, this slide here, um, this one here. Then you see on the right side, these are the, uh, the, the first rule is only valid blocks are included in the blockchain. This is exactly what I mean here. So valid blocks, proof of work is correct and the transaction, uh, the transactions included are valid. And now the, another block comes and this block is block 13. And this is exactly the block a, a miner mines where a double spending transaction is in there. So what we have in here now is it's a invalid block. Why? Um, the okay that doesn't work. So the the um, proof of work is correct because that was the exercise says. So um, proof of work is correct, but what is wrong? There is a transaction in there which is invalid. And if one of these two parts is invalid, obviously the complete block is invalid. So what is going to happen? Other people who are very likely to say, okay, this block is garbage, we do not accept it. And there is, there will likely be a scenario like this. And now the question is, what happened to transactions? that were actually in this block 13. And the um, overall question is kind of confusing and that's a little bit to, to um, distract you a little bit from the very easy answer because the answer is, um, the very easy answer is that 
what happens to transactions which are uh, sorry you don't see that um, is on the slide um, behind this uh, simulation here what happens to transactions which are included in the orphans blocks because it is it does not matter if this is an orphan block an invalid block or the block never existed or, or, or whatever you or whatever you do with this block the, the central network does not care what you did to that block if it's invalid or not if it's orphaned or not so it has no influence on your current situation so transactions that are included in there if they are later on valid they will be continued later in the blockchain and if they are not valid then because double spending attempt like the transaction from um, this attacker here uh, will not be included in the longest chain so invalid transactions never reach the um, long will never reach it will never be included in the longest chain invalid transactions if they use proper transaction fees, if they don't, if they have very low transaction fees, it could be that they do get not included. But if they have um, proper transaction fees and if they are valid, they will always wind up in the longest chain. So that's for sure. Well, let's talk, uh, take a look at Tweetback here. Um, No questions so far, except um, the one my colleague answered already. Okay. Um, there, there's one question wind up. So, um, so transactions and orphaned blocks are re-added to the mind pool. Very good questions. Are they re-added or not? Um, it, it really depends on which mining pool you ask. So, um, uh, which memory pool, sorry. Um, or actually, yeah. So in, in most memory pools, um, it won't get added again. Um, why? Because it's already in there. It has never been removed. So if you have a block which you don't know of or which you received, but you did not consider it, then you did not remove this transaction from your memory pool. But of course, if you bet it or you, you assumed a block to be valid that um, did not wind up in the transaction, in the, in the longest chain, then it could happen that um, this transaction reach you again. But I don't think there is a protocol in terms of, okay, let's re-add these transactions back, back to our memory pool. Why? Because it's, there is no harm if I miss transactions in my memory pool. So if I'm a miner, I obviously want to have a large memory pool. I want to know of all valid transactions because I want to be able to include the transactions with the most profit for me, with the highest transaction fees for me into my block. But if I am a, um, if I am a full node, I don't need to have a memory pool at all. I, any message that comes to me in some, that is a new transaction, I could say, yeah, that's nice. I'm, I'm not interested in that because when I receive a new block, I also receive the transactions in there and therefore is, therefore there is no need to, to keep them in your memory pool. So it is not important that you have a memory pool, except you're a miner and it is not important how large your memory pool is. So, um, this is also what's going on sometimes. The Bitcoin memory pool has a maximum limit in the Bitcoin core client, but there are some hacks, there are some fixes to allow for an indefinite amount of memory pool. Why is this, why is this useful? Because as I said, as a miner, you want to have the most knowledge. You want to know the best uh, thing here, uh, the, 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 the best transactions for your block. Okay. Let's continue with another question. Um, Serious question, could I DDoS the system by publishing a lot of fake transactions such that the checks and the memory consumption grow very large? Um, so you could um, DDoS the system by publishing a lot of transactions, but they need to be valid. If they are invalid, the first full node um, which received it will say, okay, that's a fake transaction. The transaction is invalid. We'll first of all throw the transaction away 
and will block any further message, messages from the node it received this transaction. So um, it's, obviously you can DDoS anything. Yeah, that's not the, that's not the that's not the issue. But the system itself, if you can, if you're not able to DDoS every node in the system, then you would not be able to um, bring this network to a halt. Obviously, single nodes are always prone to attacks, but in this case, not. The old host system not. Very good. Let's continue. Box it again. Explain two reasons behind transaction fees. Why is the block reward not sufficient? Um, this is a very good question, and I um, we did not actually cover this in the in the in the lecture. Um, why we actually need transaction fees? So um, there are two there are two good, very good reasons for transaction fees. One is um, what we already discussed in terms of um, with the halving issue. So we have um, the Bitcoin halving leads to the fact that um, someday there won't be any mining reward anymore or the mining reward will get so small that it's not really a motivation for the miner to pour in energy investment, stuff like that into the system. So they will, they are likely going to stop um, mining if they don't receive money. So. Um, we need to think about how can we incentivize miners to further continue their work on the Bitcoin network. And this is the idea with transaction fees. So if the transaction fees are high enough for the miners to continue their work, then that's a very good reason to do so. And um, that's the first reason for transactions fees to be there. And the second, um, trans uh, second reason for transaction fees, sorry, is a little bit more difficult or more complicated um, to see from the beginning afterwards it's very clear so um, and exactly the, your um, colleague already mentioned it in exactly in this question could i ddos the system by publishing a lot of fake transactions um, if there would not be if there wouldn't would no tra damn it if there is no transaction fees if there are no transaction fees, then you would be able to create um, transactions that don't cost you money. And therefore, you could bring the system to a halt or overhaul the system, overload the system by creating that many transactions. But if there is a cost assigned to each transaction, you have to spend a shitload of money to really get the system down. And in the end, um, you lose a lot of money, but um, it maybe takes two days, three days a week um, until your transactions are gone. Um, but then it will uh, continue to work normally. But that's definitely an issue. Um, so in 2017, and this is what we saw um, in the slides here. Uh, let me check if I have them with me here. PowerPoint. No, this is consensus of, um, I'll get the other slides. Let's do it like this. More easier. And then we have this here. And these are the transactions waiting in the memory pool. And this is what we saw here, 2017, uh, where um, the network got spammed, so to say. It's unclear if they actually spammed it. Um, or if it was the high demand that lead uh, to this um, high delays, but um, that could be interpreted as, a, as spamming. Okay. So these are the two reasons here. Any questions on tweetback? Um, very good question here. Let me, let's get to that. Um, question is, what if a miner wants to keep the transactions with high fees for himself and not broadcast this to other miners memory pools? Can he keep them until he will solve puzzle or create new block? Isn't it against the benefit of wallet owner because he should wait longer? So um, let's take a look in here. So for example, this green, this green um, node has a, um, this one here has some high transaction um, fees 
that they want to that enter the network and they will send it to their connected nodes and these this one this up here decides now to oh i'm withholding it i'm not sending it to that one then you see it actually does not matter if this node sends um, the information to that node because it will receive the information from this node so you have to be the first one and you have to be the only one who receives the transactions to block this um, inflow but otherwise if you're the second one to hear um, forget it you cannot block it and for example these transactions will, are likely coming from exchanges stuff like that so the chance um, is very high that um, you're not able to block it into the network okay um let's continue explain why the mining difficulty in the bitcoin network is adjusted every 2016's block so we talked we discussed a little bit about that so um mining reward uh, uh difficulty recalculation 2016 blocks is roughly 14 days and um we had a nice slide on this if we look into a powerpoint here um, we had this uh, difficulty recalculation here and um, why do we need to recalculate it um, the time has to be constant here or should um, be 10 minutes and if we do not do this recalculation then um, this time will likely go out of will we'll get faster will get slower and we need this constant 10 minutes um, otherwise the um, transaction speed goes down that's the reason and therefore the network capacity decreases so it's also not that good currently as you saw yesterday i think 3.6 what point something transactions per second these are numbers which are not really exact um, because there are so many variables um, and um, that's definitely a downsider and if it's getting too fast so if the block time goes down to uh, two minutes to one minute to um, some seconds then it's the higher possibility of chain forking. So leading to multiple realities. So it's not a chain anymore, but it's going to open up like a, like a tree. And that's not something you wanna um, have because um, you want the miners to spend their energy uh, most beneficial. So they should not work on something that's not useful for them because then they will stop doing that. Um, also, the network has to keep up with the blocks. Empty blocks will are likely to appear. So these are all downsides. Therefore, um, this is a very good um, reason to recalculate this. Every 2016 blocks, this is an arbitrary number from Satoshi Nakamoto. Other blockchains have um, included uh, ways to recalculate it basically on each block. So you can... that. Um, the difficulty is much more often calculated so this it does not change anything on this formula um it's it basically stays the same but is more flexible adopts quicker to um due to changes of the network hash rate and this is something i would um i'm i would think it's is more it makes more sense because, for example, if you an, an, uh, if an attacker, for example, has some kind of supercomputer or some very powerful network, and uh, they see um, the network is um, is um, like ten days ahead into recalculating, and then he pours ten days um, computational power in there, really increases the difficulty by a lot, and um, so maximum increase here four and then leave the network and then the network will really 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 slow down and the problem is um that it does not recalculate after um, two weeks um, but it takes more longer because now the time between two blocks is not 10 minutes anymore but 20 minutes then it would it would take four weeks until the next recalculation so that's some kind of danger i see or yeah that's where i would say okay that could be a little bit dangerous but that's just a personal opinion and um but that's not something we have observed ever um how many bitcoins will there be at the end so very easy question uh, 21 million bitcoin are there at the end um exactly um it's um uh 20 million 
999,000 and some, um, but it's not uh, new. So 21 million, I think, is the important number here. And um, how often is the mining reward halved? Um, I think we discussed this already. It's every um, 210,000 blocks. So also um, roughly about four years, um, depending on your network activity. But we spent um, some time discussing this. And there's a last question. A company accepts cryptocurrencies. At, oh, sorry, maybe um, I don't have my tweet back open. Oh, good. No questions so far. A company accepts cryptocurrencies as a payment. What factors should it consider regarding the confirmation time to receive transactions safely? I'll let you think that about for a second. So when we talk about um, receiving transactions, when are you sure that you really received money? And this has something to do with a confirmation time. Um, let's take a look at um, what we see here. Let's, ah, very good. So let's go back to our block explorer here. This has, oh no, that's not, that's more. So what we see here is, make this a little bit sharper. You see here a block ID. So this is the transaction, the Coinbase transaction we looked before. And we see the block here, um, uh, 631,903, and it has nine confirmations. So what does nine confirmation mean? Nine confirmations mean that, um, on top of this block, nine further blocks have built up on. So if your block has zero confirmations, no other block has built up on. And for that reason, um, this is the, the confirmation is something that is used very commonly in, in this, in this, um, in this, um, in this area. So you don't talk about time, but you talk about block height or confirmations here. And um, there are two factors to include. Um, first of all, it's the um, the majority of the network, so to say. So how big is your network? How likely is it that someone is actually able to um, double spend your transaction? So um, if you want to uh, be able to basically to create two um, alternative realities, two blocks with the same height, then you need a lot of um, a lot of power, a lot of computational power. So that's something and that um, needs to happen. So the bigger your network is, the more safe you are, the smaller your network is, the less safe you are. So there are there were some double spendings. We will see this in the next exercise. And um, also the amount of the payment is very important. So for example, if you think about, um, I received a transaction which is worth $10, no one will spend $10,000 um, to create a, uh, a double spending pattern. They will say, okay, I don't, that's just a, you have to think about costs, costs and benefits. Yeah. So the attacker wants um, definitely a benefit, um, more benefit than costs. So smaller transactions are not that critical, but higher transactions are more critical, are um, more dangerous. Also, um, the identification of the counterparty could be a reason you should consider. So for example, if this is an anonymous guy who is, uh, you don't have anything from him, then you're not able to, to go after him. So in terms of a legal sense, you cannot really do this on chain, but you have to go to courts or to your police, something like that. So that could also be a consideration. And, um, other parameters could also influence this decision, network activity, previous experiences, own business model. So that really depends on how you set up your business, what you, um, what the purpose is for you. So obviously you have to also think about, um, how fast do you want to process this, um, transaction? So maybe the person is standing in front of you in your store and pays with Bitcoin. You maybe don't want to wait 60 minutes until <laughs> until you say okay you can go now i believe that it's mine now so that's something to consider 
Um, but these are the main, so I would say the main two are uh, the majority of the network and the amount of the payment and others would be the identification of the counterparties and further parameters here. Um, but in general, um, for example, if you look at, um, we can now do a little bit Googling together. Mm, for example, let's look at um, Kraken is a um, exchange uh, confirmation time. And what they do is a cryptocurrency deposit processing time. So what is a um, deposit? So for example, you have a Bitcoin, you have 10 Bitcoins on your um, uh, hardware wallet and you now want to trade with it. And if you want to trade it, you need to first send it to an exchange. You need to deposit into exchange. And Kraken is an exchange with allows, which allows you to change your money for um, your Bitcoins for money. So we can look at this and then we have a little bit of discussion, a describe this, um, this description. And I would, um, I also explained this to you and then you see something like here. So you see Bitcoin, they call it XBT. That's um, a Kraken specific number. They say six confirmations are about 60 minutes. But for example, if you look at Ethereum, that's also what we're going to look at. It's 30 confirmations, so 30 blocks. But as um, the time for a block in Ethereum is 10 to 15 seconds, um, this is a much, much lower um, number. And um, what you see here is Ethereum Classic. <laughs> they require 43,200 confirmations, which roughly takes a week. Why is that the case? Because of the majority of the network. No one uses it or, or it's hardly used. There is not much um, um, hash rate flowing into the network. So a large miner or a large miner in Ethereum, which has the same um, hash algorithm as Ethereum Classic, would be able to just go in there and say, okay, we recalculate thousands of blocks and take back our money. So this is um, what happened, for example, with Bitcoin Gold. I don't know if it's in there. Tax gold that doesn't sound like Bitcoin gold, but they actually rem I think they they had it someday, but they removed it obviously because not too important anymore. But this is a very interesting thing to look at and to see. Okay, how are they doing? Um, so for example, we can do like uh, Binance is also an exchange. Um, now that's just a tutorial here. So, so for Ethereum, um, 12 block, so um, from 30 confirmations to 12 confirmations and um, has been half to one block confirmation in Bitcoin. So they are much more confident with these um, systems and um, than Kraken is. But interesting to see how they um, understand it. 